Roll Tide, everybody. Welcome to Cover Crimson. What a game it was for Coach DeBoer and Alabama. I mean, the score says it all, 63 to nothing over Western Kentucky, a Western Kentucky Hilltoppers team that thought they were going to come to Tuscaloosa and really make waves. But how good was it? And how confident should we be? What were your biggest takeaways from this game? We're going to get into all that today, Labor Day edition of the show. Like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Thanks for being here. Get in the comments section, and let's get this party started. All right, there he is, Clint Lamb. I'm Mick Gillespie, and uh, it is great to see all of you guys today, or at least uh, maybe you see us today. But uh, big game for Alabama. DeBoer's coaching tenure has started, Clint, and Alabama with a win. Uh, should we be confident about where this team is? They won 63 to nothing, right? I mean, no one can stop Alabama. Yeah, I thought they played really well. Um, and, and granted, you'd like to see more consistency on offense. Uh, I felt like the, you know, it was either quick scoring drives or it was not scoring at all. Uh, you know, in a lot of cases, uh, defensively, you'd like to see them not give up a 21 play drive, but it didn't result in points. Uh, in hindsight, I'm sure Western Kentucky probably wishes they would have kicked the field goal because it would have prevented the shutout, but they elected to go for it, didn't get it. And, uh, Alabama, you know, ended up having a lot of success on both sides of the football. I thought there was a lot of standout performers. I thought guys played extremely aggressive defensively, uh, swarming, you know, that swarm defense mentality, it, just watching it, you could tell that these guys were ready to play some football and were eager to play some football. And, uh, you know, it made a huge difference as far as Jalen Milrose performance, Mick, I know we really didn't get a chance to talk about it, uh, too much, you know, after the game and the post game. What did you think about it? Did you think that he played, you know, on a scale of one to 10, what would you grade it? Uh, well, man, I thought he did I, a couple things. I, I thought that he looked comfortable. If you don't sack him, I mean, he's going to make you pay. I like his running ability. Obviously, I think he's still trying to figure out where everyone is, but he's such a deep threat. I was wait, hoping to see maybe a more sustained drive or two, you know, just to kind of get an idea of the rhythm of things. But they were so explosive, meaning that it didn't take long to score so many times that it was really hard to evaluate how that short, you know, the short game has changed. And I heard that he has worked on his feet, that he's worked on his release a little bit on the mid-range stuff. That's where he struggled last year. But all in all, I mean, the guy gets out there and he leads the team. So I, I, I can't really say anything other than when he's behind, you know, under center, I'm pretty confident in, in Alabama's ability to win football games. I think that's the biggest compliment you can give a quarterback. Yeah. Um, what'd I, you think? Yeah, yeah. No, I thought he played really well. Uh, I, I thought he looked a lot more comfortable, uh, worked through his progressions a lot more than we've seen him do in the past. Uh, you'd still like to see like the intermediate parts of the field. He looks way more comfortable. He's still got that deep ball accuracy. He still likes to push the football down the field. Uh, the short stuff, you know, you'd like to see a little bit more on that. There were some inconsistencies with the footwork. Uh, you would like to see him take his check down a little bit more like stuff. Wasn't always available, you know, in that, uh, intermediate to deep parts of the field, but there was plenty of stuff open underneath and he wasn't always willing to come back to that and just take a simple gain. It's like once, you know, uh, one of those types of plays is called, he really wants to, you know, have that opportunity to push the ball downfield and stuff. And I think that just as he continues to get more comfortable in this system and stuff, that that will come. But uh, I, overall, I thought he played really well. I mean, you look at 600 yards of offense and 63 points, uh, and, you know, your quarterback's total <laughs> yeah. attempted 18 passes. I mean, that is pretty absurd when you think about it. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the offensive line, I mean, and, and let me go back and you guys know this by now, Proctor injured his sh uh, shoulder and it really played to the advantage that whole battle between Eliza Pritchard and Wilkham Formby. But the, but what really helped was that when Proctor was gone, uh, Pritchard was playing that position. So he just slid over there and had some experience there, but we thought that the offensive line would be a strength 
and it felt like the offensive line was a strength. Um, yeah, I mean, I will say this, um, uh, because you got to put everything into context. Pritchett does have a lot of experience at left tackle. And in fact, pretty much his entire college career has been spent on that side. Uh, you know, there were even times where maybe we thought, you know, they might switch JC Latham to left tackle last year and Pritchard would be, you know, a, a very strong potential candidate to start at right tackle. We never saw him getting any work over there. It was always on the left side. And, you know, so I'm not saying that you, that there's this built in excuse for him because he does have a lot of that experience, but he had been spending the last few weeks working at right tackle in that competition with Wilkin Formby. And, you know, at the last second in pregame warmups, your starting left tackle goes down. Mm -hmm. and you have to kick back over to the left side, which you haven't played in a couple of weeks or a few weeks. And so doing that on the fly, uh, I'm sure is, you know, pretty difficult, but it's not like he's never played the position. Um, so there was probably a little bit of rust, had to knock some things off. Uh, I thought he played okay, but I still think there's a lot of work to be done as far as his technique. I still don't think he's getting, you know, deep enough in his initial pass sets. I, th I still think he's trying to turn and chase, um, and that's kind of causing him some trouble. But, you know, in the run game, I thought he was pretty good. I thought he had a couple of really good reps as far as his pass protection. And so you, it, it's really a matter of consistency. But with this kind of, you know, with what happened to Proctor, you're, you're trying to watch a right tackle battle play out. And the expectation going in was that you were going to see Formby, you know, he was announced as the starter, which was not really a surprise. Um, but, you know, you also were expecting to see Pritchett. It's hard to evaluate Pritchett as a right tackle when he spent the entire game at left tackle because Proctor went down. Mm -hmm. So we don't, we didn't really get any clarity on what that rotation was going to look like. Was it, you know, mostly Formby, but you're getting a little bit of Pritchett, kind of like Proctor and Pritchett last year at left tackle, or was it going to be a complete even split? How do they both look on that side? I don't think it's fair to kick Pritchett over to the left side right there at the last second and then evaluate his performance as far as what he could be as a right tackle. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's unfortunate how that played out. But the important part about this, the good part about it, is that you had two guys who were in a battle to start at right tackle. Both of them got significant game reps because Proctor wasn't available. And you talk about that depth that needs to be established at tackle uh, we think it's kind of, you know, you, you've had three options. Um, you know, I think getting those guys reps was extremely uh, valuable as far as, you know, whoever ends up winning, if Proctor can make it his way back at some point, um, which, you know, we don't know really anything on that. We probably, well, I guess we'll find out more today or hopefully we, we will. But, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be something to monitor. But for right now, the, you know, Alabama is still in pretty good shape uh, with Pritchett and, and Formby. But now more depth needs to be established at that position because you're in a pretty good spot with three. You're not in a great spot with two, especially when you've only played one game. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what the, you know, the long term uh, impact of this shoulder injury will be for Proctor. You know, you know, you know what they tell you, but then you know what what is it really going to look like? Because uh, you got to have a good shoulder to play <laughs> on the offensive line. I've heard two two completely different things from two people. I mean, and that's why I don't want, we don't want to report on anything. We don't want to say stuff that's, that ends up being wrong. Yeah. Uh, and you know, it, it's just, you talk to one, you hear one thing, you're like, oh, okay. And then you talk to someone else and you hear something completely different. And it's like, okay, there's, that's a pretty wide gap there. Um, so it's just a matter of determining the safest thing to do is to just let Kalen DeBoer, uh, maybe, you know, we should have pressed him a little more, uh, even though we kind of knew it was a shoulder type of issue with the way he was in a sling, he had ice on it. Um, we know we knew it wasn't like a leg injury or something, right? But uh, you know, I, I really don't think that Alabama had the information after the game and, and really needed to run some more tests and all that stuff. And that's happening, you know, it happened yesterday. They'll know a lot more today, but it's just, um, you know, it, it was a very odd situation and how it went down. I thought, you know, on the fly with everything that was thrown at Alabama's offense, really their team in general early, you know, just with the helmet communication stuff. Um, or the, the, the coach's communication with the headsets, that going down, how they adjusted on the fly, still were able to communicate, do all those things. I thought it was actually a really impressive performance because they, they faced some unexpected adversity very early on. Yeah, well, they sure did. Guys, thanks for hanging out with us. Let me remind you, too, 
that our show is brought to you by my bookie. And uh, this is that time of year. Now we're finally here, right? Where you can uh, watch college football. Maybe you feel confident. You got a little pizza money. You want to throw it down, do it at mybookie.ag. Use the promo code next round to double your initial deposit. That's right. My bookie will double your initial deposit. When you use the promo code next round, kick off the football season with mybookie.ag and double your initial deposit using the code next round. And we appreciate them for being a part of what we're doing here. Um, Stand on the offensive side of the ball here. Ryan Williams with two catches and two touchdowns could not have been a bigger debut. And think about the, the history of Alabama football storied history. It's hard to argue that that's not the greatest entrance ever for a player. I mean, he's supposed to be in high school and and he's at Alabama. I keep saying this and that's kind of a joke, but (laughs) it's the greatest. It's the greatest game one for a guy that's supposed to be in high school in the history of Alabama football, a freshman. That's a true freshman. That's really supposed to be a senior in high school. Um, With that said, what, can we look into this? Is you know, or is this just a couple broken plays here? Did did it, or what? I mean, did did he do something special besides just catch the ball and score? What are we looking at? Well, I mean, I, I think you got a little bit of everything, and, and kind of what made him a special talent coming out of high school, such a special talent. Um, you know, the fact that he can win vertically like he did, uh, that's huge. The fact that he can, you know, he was kind of working across the middle of the field. Uh, you know, when he caught the second one, he was able to break a tackle being 175 pounds and that's his listed weight. He might even be a little bit lighter than that, but anywhere, you know, we we've seen him at 165. We've seen him all the way up to 175. He's somewhere in that range. And for being a guy that small, when you look at like Devonte Smith, you know, he had a lot of that ability where it didn't really affect him. Now, granted, you know, I think Devonte Smith from like a blocking perspective is kind of, it, it's weird. Like I would argue he's probably the Eagles best blocking receiver and they got like a 230 pound AJ Brown, uh, on that team, but just Smitty's always been really good at blocking. I wouldn't say Ron Williams necessarily has that, uh, level of blocking chops, but he, he certainly has a willingness in that area. Uh, he's got the right stuff mentally, which we've already talked about, but you know, the, the being able to break the tackle. And just the way that he set up the defensive back, uh, you know, trying to make the tackle was exceptional. He's just a special talent, man. And, um, you know, I want to say that those were his only two targets. Yeah, they were. So we only got two targets. Uh, really, it was another one of those you think uh, Kalen DeBoer and company are going to, you know, sling the football around. That's what everybody's talked about. They had a lot of success through the air. So it's not like they didn't, but, you know, you start looking at these target numbers, 18 total attempts, and the the leader is Kobe Prentice with four targets. You had Caleb Odom with three, which was a late game situation, and then everybody else had one or two. So obviously you've got a lot of guys that are in that rotation. You you were subbing a lot of guys in and out, and it felt like from the very beginning, uh, Kalen DeBoer and, and those guys were comfortable and, and confident in their ability to win the football game. And maybe they were working, you know, a lot of different guys in just to see, you know, who performed when things went live and all that. So I don't even know if the rotation will continue to be as, you know, as much even in early in games. Like it's not just working into your depth later. That's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the beginning of the game, both offensively and defensively, an absurd amount of rotation. And, you know, I don't know if they will continue that much or if that's just going to be the approach. But Ron Williams, it's not just about what he does when you throw him the football. It's about what his presence does for other people. And the fact that they had to start giving him extra attention or keeping up with him, that creates opportunities underneath. Uh, that creates you know uh, opportunities in the run game. So Ron Williams, I mean, he was as advertised. And uh, you know I think he's only going to continue to get better from here because we got to remember that was his first ever college football game. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, running back-wise, we talked about this a lot, and these guys were exactly what we thought they were going to be, right? Explosive and dangerous. Uh, Justice had the run of the night. Jam had his score, too. Both of them were great. They both had acceleration. We didn't see a whole lot of them because they scored so fast. But I think for Alabama fans, there's a couple things that I think of. First off, why didn't we see more of these guys last year? And the second thing is, 
that they're both amongst the best in the SEC. Well, I'll tell you right now, uh, just the home run hitting ability of these guys. I mean, uh, that uh, bringing that element to an offense adds another wrinkle and dynamic to everything. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to account for things that are different. I mean, if you've got, you know, I love Roy Dell Williams to death. I think he's a, a really solid player. But when you're watching him, it's like he doesn't really have that threat to break a really, really long gain. Uh, so you can play him a little bit differently. But I thought just the fact that they use, you know, a lot of jam stuff uh, was kind of, you know, of a, a, a between the tackles kind of success. Jam Miller doing a lot of the off tackle stuff. You know, he was getting to space, loved the perimeter blocking by the receivers in a lot of those situations. I love the perimeter blocking by, you know, the tight ends. I thought, you know, the pullers were doing extremely well blocking out in space. And that's a question that I had. You know, Tyler Booker lost a lot of weight going from 350 plus pounds down to, you know, what is closer to 335 or something like that. I don't remember the exact number. That's obviously going to help as far as his athleticism and his uh, stamina. But you you still wonder, I mean, that's still a really big offensive guard. And so how is he going to do? He's always been really athletic for a guy his size. But how would he do in this Kalen DeBoer type of system where he's having to, you know, really get out in space probably a lot more? do some different things. And I just thought he handled it extremely well. I thought the entire offensive line, uh, you know, played well from a run blocking perspective. Like I said, you still would like to see a little bit more consistency. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think overall you have to be pleased with the performance because if they can find a little bit more of that consistency um, and, and get more comfortable there, I mean, this offense, the sky is really the limit. Make sure you guys are subscribers to the channel. We appreciate it. We appreciate you being here. Uh, also, give us a thumbs up, and we uh, thank all of you for hanging out with us here on Labor Day and uh, talking Alabama football. It's been a lot of fun building this channel. We're seeing a lot of momentum, and we're hoping that that continues. And for those that hung out with us post game, uh, that was fun too. You know, doing a, a show live after the game. Now it gets a little bit late because we're playing all these late games, and that's going to be the case again this week, and we'll talk about that matchup, which, by the way, ironically, another 31-point spread for Alabama when they take on South Florida. I got a feeling that South Florida is going to see a different Alabama team than they faced last year, this year, just the continuity on the offense. But all in all, grade for offense before we switch to defense week one. Uh, you know, I, I give it – I give it a very solid B plus mm -hmm. and, and you know, I, I really can't go a minus can't go a plus because of the consistency factor, but it's also like how many opportunities do they really have to need to find a consistently sustained long drive? Yeah. Like when you're getting the explosive plays, I mean, whether it be in the run game or in the passing game, um, I mean, it's just, you know, finding that rhythm where you can have those sustained drives is kind of right. difficult. So it, it's tough to evaluate that. But I will say that, you know, uh, you would like to see a little bit more of it because it's like your defense goes out there for a 21 play drive. That's on them third, fourth down. Uh, it just felt like that in one of those two situations, Western Kentucky on that particular drive was converting a ton. And then, you know, your offense has got to be able to go out there and and kind of give them a break, give them an opportunity. Because, you know, if, if you don't do that, if it's a Wisconsin type of opponent or Georgia or, you know, a lot of these SEC teams that you're going to be playing, you could find yourself in a really bad situation. Now, with Alabama, the good part about it for Alabama is that they have that depth on the defense and they can rotate a lot of guys, but you just want to be able to have those. When you need to chew clock, you want to be able to do that. Uh, and so, you know, a solid B plus, I thought just, you know, if you take it position by position, I thought every position played really well. And it just, it, it, it was an exciting style of football and offense. Yeah. All right. So B plus for the offense. I can't argue with that. Let's switch gears to the defense before we do, though. A lot of you were on campus uh, for the game, and uh, you always want to look sharp when you're showing up to, to cover uh, the game, hang out at the game, uh, tailgate, you know, which, which I love doing. And right now, if you go to um, Roback, not my, my book, he can't get closed there, at Roback, uh, promo code ROOM20 gets you 20% off your first order. So, hey, man, get the, check out the Bama gear. It's and phenomenal. We've, yeah, we've been promised that we're going to get some. I want the one with the little Bryant Denny stadiums on it. You know, Hold up. That, hey, that's what I want. You want that one too? Uh, Jake and I, Jake Coker and I got a box from those guys a while ago, and we had a draft 
uh, here in studio. And you just had to like blindly look in there and grab something and pull it out. And um, he got the, uh, the, the Alabama shirt. I got the Alabama hoodie somehow. And then he wore it to Galette's on Friday when we recorded the tailgate show and you look great. I was like, man, I need one of those. So you guys can buy one room 20, 20% 20 off your first order at roback.com and uh, like, and subscribe again. I'm sorry. I got to ask you to do that, but um, look, it's how we pay the bills around here. All right. That's that. We got to build the algorithm. Let's switch to defense. Uh, Alabama's defense pitched a shutout at times. It felt like Western Kentucky had, a little bit of rhythm, got down the field. They missed a field goal one time. You know, the Bama stopped them on fourth to preserve the the shutout, and uh, they they turned the ball over. You know, Keon Sav had a couple interceptions early. It could have had three. But Alabama's defense, I thought, was ferocious. Uh, Deontay Lawson and Jihad Campbell, to me, were all over the place. That line, the the two linebacker spots. I love that about this defense. Your thoughts, though, on overall on that on the defense? I mean, it just there, there's so much good, so many encouraging signs. You know, I can't say enough. Uh, you know, we we did get quite a few answers. Granted, you don't know exactly how things are going to look against you know the Wisconsin's and the Georgias. Like I said, I mean, it, it could have been a situation where even going in, like Nick Saban always had this approach, you uh, every opponent the exact same. And, you know, it just, it, it, hey, if this was, how would we be approaching this game as far as our, per, our our personnel and stuff if it was, you know, LSU this week? The only time you really saw that change a ton is, you know, home for, and, you know, it's opponent to a, to an extent. Um, like I said, like a Tyler Booker, when he was a freshman, he didn't play at all against Texas. It was a road game. It was only the, the second game he ever would have played in. He didn't have that trust yet. And so in those situations, you'll see him adjust a little bit, but you really never saw him going ahead and working into the depth more from pretty much the, the beginning of the game. And we don't necessarily know that's what Kalen DeBoer was doing. Like this could be Alabama's rotations, but I just thought it was crazy how often they were getting guys in the field. I'm sure they've seen a lot in practice and they just wanted to say, hey, We've seen you in practice. You've done some good things. Go out there and show us you can do it when things are live. But, uh, you know, just the encouraging signs, when you look at all three levels, I love how Kane Womack and company utilized the personnel. They threw a lot at Western Kentucky defensively. Uh, you saw them, you know, be more situational. And I, I find it interesting how you can pretty much run anything out of that 4-2-5 defense to an extent. Uh, you know, you, you get more athletic in those third and long situations where you move Jahad Campbell from off ball linebacker to an edge to play opposite, you know, Quandarius Robinson, who came in and, and a lot of those third down situations, you bring uh, James Smith, who's more of a, a, an interior pass rusher at this point in his career, more than a complete player, I would say, even though he's getting a lot closer on that front, you kick your bandit inside to become a, a, a pass rusher like Jamarian Latham. And then you bring in what has, you know, a guy like Justin Jefferson who has DB like athleticism. And now, you know, you, that he essentially acts as your sixth defensive back in a lot of ways. So you're kind of in dime, but you're not. You're still in that 4 2 5. Uh, you know, when they got closer to the goal line in a couple of situations, you saw the two edge guys be, you know, uh, LT Overton and Jamarian Latham. So you beef things up a little bit because the field is more condensed. Uh, there was just so many different things that I saw and noticed as far as how they utilized the personnel, moving Jaha Campbell around like they did. Uh, it was a lot of fun to watch. And just from, I, I can't say enough good things about all of these guys. There was nobody that I watched that I'm like, he didn't play well. I thought Devontae Smith played well at Husky. Keon Sab played great. I mean, the linebackers, all three of their top guys played really well. Defensive front, you know, maybe, uh, you know, a Tim Smith didn't get a chance to do a ton, even though I do think he, he had a good game as well. Same thing for Tim Keenan. Uh, you know, James Smith was coming in and doing some good things. The Wolves, uh, we didn't see as much Keanu Coot, uh, you know, kind of until the second half, which I thought was interesting because we thought it was kind of a three-man rotation there. It might end up being a two. We saw Quay Russo working, or, or Russo working at uh, the Wolf, mostly on early downs. It, mm -hmm. it kind of early on, it was early down. And then passing situations with uh, Quandarius Robinson, I think that was more of just what Q brings to the table, um, and, and nothing that you know Rusal can't do. And we do, we also saw him playing in some of those third down situations, and he was absolutely 
uh, dominant, in my opinion, just phenomenal player. Uh, and they, you know, did a lot with him as far as moving him off the line of scrimmage, kind of playing more of three, three, five looks, four, two, five as well. So they're just very versatile defense. And I love the way they utilize the personnel. Guys, sign up with us, covercrimson.com, covercrimson.com. That's where Clint is on the message board. Uh, we're on the message board talking about Alabama all the time. We got exclusive content over there, and you can do it for just a dollar as we uh, build this thing up. So, don't forget that's what this is all about, right? It's uh, it's about talking here, but we got exclusive shows, including um, Mike Johnson. We're gonna hear from Mike Johnson. Uh, him and I will get together a couple of times this week. The two time All American at Alabama, the All American Report. With it should be the two time All American Report though just because it's uh, it's Mike. But uh, sign up, covercrimson.com right now for just a dollar and hang out with Clint. Clint, uh, as we kind of talk defense, I'm sure that there's some uh, – it's going to be a lot of great content on Cover Crimson just kind of breaking down all the snaps and everything going on. Who played what Saturday? Yeah, that, that's actually what I'm in the process of doing right now. And we went ahead and got this video recorded. Uh, you know, it's Labor Day, so, it, you know, we know that people are out. They're having a good time with their families. So we decided to kind of pre-record, not do this live, but that kind of, you know, I will be getting the snap counts up. I've been looking at those really interesting stuff. Going to be sharing my thoughts on that because a lot of that stuff matters. And I've been going back. It's taking a little bit longer because I also want to try my best to include some context behind the snaps, you know, not just the surface level, what you saw, how guys did, but, you know, okay, Red Morgan was seeing X amount of time with the starters and then he played, you know, a little bit. Uh, you know, he carried into the game a little bit longer. Uh, so I think all that's important, like Keanu Coot, what we talked about with him, all of his snaps, you got to add context to that and, and let everybody know he really didn't play in the first half much. So it's just, it, it's going to be take a little bit longer this week compared to most weeks. And it's the first game, new, new systems on both sides of the football, but it just, uh, yeah. So we're going to be doing the snap count observations. That's going to be at covercrimson.com. Only a dollar to sign up and check that stuff out, but it's more than that. Uh, we're going to be doing it, looking at some, you know, stock up, stock down. We're going to be doing a video on that, but I'm also going to be adding that to the message board, looking at a lot of different guys. Going to be starting to preview USF and and kind of what uh, fans can expect from that. So just pretty much from start to finish, there's a lot of content going on at CoverCrimson.com. Let's talk about the cornerbacks. This was an area of concern for Alabama because of all of the guys they lost in their secondary. But the I, I don't know. I mean, what what do what do you think? I mean, how how much did we see Mbakwe? You know, how much did we see Jones and Jackson? How did you think those guys played? Also, Zabian Brown, say Mincy. I mean, give give me the the breakdown on the cornerbacks. Yeah, you know, I that was one of those like fascinating positions that you know there was a lot more rotation mm -hmm. than you know we kind of realized. Um, not only did you have Zabian Brown starting the game opposite Damani Jackson, but you had like Jalen and Bakway coming in pretty early. I uh, did think it was interesting, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm still going back to double check this, but I want to say that Jones didn't enter until he might have even been behind Mincy, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which I was very shocked to see Mincy when we did. But I mean, and at first he comes in, he's playing boundary. He's got like a boundary body. He's kind of perfect for that side of the field. And you're thinking, okay, you know, he's playing boundary, makes perfect sense. And then you see him kind of going over to the other side of the field, playing the field side. So I think it was more matchup based and how they approach things. And they did say that they were going to handle it that way in certain situations. And it might be a week by week basis on that. But uh, you saw Jalen and Bakwe sub in for Damani Jackson and play the field side. You saw him playing boundary quite a bit. Uh, just an, an incredible amount of depth. I was, you know, there were some things that you want to see these guys as far as the consistency aspect of the game do a little bit better. Uh, but at the same time, just considering it was their first games, I, I was extremely impressed pretty much with everybody. And I'm quickly realizing, okay, if you're getting like Zay Mincy, these kind of reps early, that's you're, you're being afforded that opportunity. And this is why I question, okay, are they going to work as much into their depth you know, on a regular basis, or was this more that you just felt really confident going in against Western Kentucky and you wanted to get a lot of different looks at a lot of different guys? You know, is Zay Mincy going to be rotating in, in the first quarter or the first half, uh, you know, against Wisconsin in a couple of weeks? Or, you know, was that a Western Kentucky and maybe a USF thing? So we'll have to wait and see on that. But just uh, how guys came in 
and how they performed and, and held up, uh, I was extremely impressed. And I think that they're they're building some depth there. I don't think they're perfect by any means. There's going to be some hiccups. There were some hiccups on Saturday. But when you consider what Western Kentucky brings to the table as far as their passing game or what we expected their passing game to be, I mean, uh, Alabama, I, mean, I, mean, I don't even remember how many yards, but it was not a lot of yardage. Uh, yeah, 103 yards through the air. Um, it's pretty crazy when you consider that this was has been one of the top passing offenses in college football the last few years. And, you know, it was the pass rush and, and the pressure it was putting on guys, but it was also the, the performance in some of these corners. Looking back over the game from Saturday with Clint Lamb, I'm Mick Gillespie, as you guys know, here on Cover Crimson. Like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. Always great to hang out with you guys. We do this every Monday, our show. But we've got a lot of other content. Elephant in the Room with Jake Coker will be available uh, the Monday mailbag will be available with with Clint and uh, Stacy, right? Yeah. So I mean, you got a lot of cool stuff coming up, and uh, make sure that you guys are a part of the channel. Hit the bell so you know when we're dropping new content. But you know, two three shows a day over here, so uh, be a part of it. All right, I'm excited to tell you, Clint, that I think Alabama's special teams are better this year than last year, and I'm going to tell you why. And then I want to hear what you think. Uh, Cole Adams is not afraid to return punts. That's a huge part of it. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, it, it, it's kind of crazy to me that how different it looked. He was attacking the football mm-hmm. um, and just, you know, I don't know if it was kind of the yips with, with Kool-Aid McKinstry. Uh, I do think a lot of that was resolved when Caleb Downs became the, the return guy, the punt returner. But, uh, you know, I think Cole Adams, he's going to be a reliable return man. Yeah, yeah, a, lot of, a we, lot of this. You know what this is? The yeah. Fair catch. Yeah, and, and that's another great point. Uh, he was willing to return stuff, and granted, some people were saying, "Hey, get get north south a little bit more than the, the east west stuff." But he 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 showed some juice on some of those returns, and and it's like I said going in, I think he's going to be a lot more dynamic as a return man than maybe people realize. Uh, you know, given um, you know, just his, in my opinion, you know, top notch athleticism. I think he's a phenomenal athlete. And when you look at even the kickoff teams and stuff, I, I, I noticed for the first kickoff, and granted, they were subbing guys in there too, so it was really hard to get a feel. You you look at that first one and you say, more than likely, this is the main kickoff team. And you see guys like Justin Jefferson and Bray Hubbard and just guys who love to hit people, man. And, and just uh, th- that just, I, to me, I was thinking of the, you know, the Mac Wilsons of the world, uh, you know, the Reuben Foster against Leonard Fournette, you know, LSU. Just a mat, you know, uh, last year, I guess it was what it was Jim Miller, if I'm not mistaken, against Ole Miss. Uh, just a, a huge hit. How you know, kind of momentum capturing that can be because typically when you're kicking off, you know, it's either at the start of the game where you really want to set the, some early momentum or you just scored. And if you just score a touchdown and then immediately have somebody go down there and take somebody's head off, now you're, you're really rolling and the defense yeah, right. is ready to go. Uh, so you know, having that style of player that just loves to hit people, Justin Jefferson, man. I think he's going to, you know, have a couple of those this year. Bray Hubbard, I mean, whether it be playing defense or special teams, he likes to pop people. So I think that from the coverage units, you're going to see, you know, quality play. But you talk about James Burnup and the, and the uh, you know, improvement that he's shown. You talk about the fact that they got Connor Talty doing the kickoffs and they got Graham Nicholson kicking the field goals. You know, Talty's got a strong leg. He can boot it. And then uh, Graham, you know, he he might not have the strongest leg in the world, but he's very consistent. So, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I think they got some really good uh, special teams opportunities, and I think that's going to only help Alabama to have that third facet of the game taken care of. Yeah, I think when you return these kicks, I mean, sometimes you got to take that step east-west just to get the, the – you know, think about Javi Arena. Sometimes he'd go back a step, and then he'd end up in the end zone, right? But I, I'm excited about Cole Adams, man. I mean, I, he was one of my – players of the game I I loved watching a guy that was willing to catch the ball and try to do something with it not saying that he's Javi Arenas but um, we'll see you know I'll tell you this much he's trying to get the ball down the field and make a and make a play and I think that could help you and think about all the big games that you know Alabama has had over the years where a Javi type guy like Javi Arenas make a play and then score and then you know you end up you know, Christian Jones was a good returner. You know, guys that just aren't afraid to get to 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 get hit and take the ball. You know, and then last year we got a guy that couldn't snap, and we had a guy that was afraid to return kicks. You know, or wouldn't do it. You know, whatever. You know, so it feels like both of those things are 
are solved, although we did have one bad snap. I, I, mean, I was going to ask you about that, Mick. That's why I was that's why I was smiling. What? First game jitters. I, I okay, because all my, my first uh, reaction when he snapped the ball over Milrow's head was immediately went to Twitter and said, don't do it, Alabama fans. Do not do it. I know you want to, but just don't do it. Let's not get carried away here. It was one. Let's let this become a consistent problem before we make it a problem. Uh, and yeah, you never want to see it, but, and I do find it funny that it was literally the first game. Um, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm with the you, rest man. of them were great though. I thought, oh, you know? were, and that's what people don't probably realize or understand. You had one that was poor, but it wasn't just the one, like you also had to look at the ones last year that weren't where they needed to be. Like, like Milro got a hold of it, but it was still wasn't in the proper location. And sometimes you didn't notice that. I mean, if, even if you got to reach to your left some or, you know, a little bit low, it's like I felt like the the consistency with the snaps, putting it right where Milrow is expecting it. Every, you know, almost every time I thought that was just tremendously improved. And I think that, you know, you look at the timing of a lot of this stuff, you look at the fact that Jalen Milrow looked a lot more comfortable and confident. That's just him having another offseason, a full offseason as the starting quarterback. That's, you know, the Kalen DeBoer factor, the, all those things play into it. But it's also, I don't think people realize that I'm sure at least a small percentage of that is just, you know, he was not having to worry about the snap. Uh, he was already looking at other things because he trusted Parker Brelsford to put it where it needed to be. And that made everything operate just a little bit better on Saturday. All right, final thoughts. And again, guys, uh, join us, covercrimson.com. Sign up for a dollar. Final thoughts, uh, Clint Lamb, game one. I just don't think, I mean, there there could have been some things that were better. Uh, but I just don't think that you could have asked for too much more. Uh, you held a, a, what, you know, I understand it's group of five, but you held a pretty good offense to zero points, 103 yards passing. You picked off the quarterback twice. Uh, you know, Keon Sabs is perfect for that vision oriented type of, you know, a system that, uh, Kane Womack brings to the table. Um, you know. Uh, so you, you have to feel good about the defense and just how they perform the offense. You'd like to see a little bit more consistency, but you had success on the ground. You had explosives on the ground, you know, a 39 yard run, a 40 yard run, an 85 yard run. You have the explosive plays downfield to Ryan Williams. And the fact that this was his first game, uh, you know, maybe you want to see the tight ends a little bit more involved in the passing game, but like probably see a little bit more of Jeremy Bernard in the passing game he didn't get as much work as kind of i was expecting but they also spread the football out quite a bit and he, he was taken out you know a lot earlier than he typically will be but i was uh you know really encouraged by what i saw and i think the the most important thing is guys looked like they were having fun they looked very relaxed and that didn't mean just because you're relaxed against western kentucky doesn't mean you're going into madison in a couple of weeks and you're going to feel the exact same way so i'm not saying that but just i think bringing more of a fun element to it naturally makes guys more relaxed and then they were just super aggressive and just all the rotation guys were fresh they were running to the football on defense it was just really fun to watch if you're an Alabama fan kind of what we were hoping to see from both sides of the football I would say you got about 98 percent of it on Saturday and I don't know if you really could have asked for too much more brought to you by mybookie.ag my bookie use the promo code next round to double your initial deposit. That's right. My bookie will double your initial deposit. When you use that promo code next round, kick off the season with mybookie.ag and double your initial deposit using the promo code next round. So there you go. Uh, take advantage of it. All right, guys, we'll be back tomorrow. Uh, we've got Jake Coker lined up for elephant in the room. We'll get his reaction, the mailbag, all that stuff right here coming up on covercrimson.com. Roll tight, everybody be a part of what we're doing and, uh, have a great labor day. I mean, uh, it's not, a, it's not a late we're laboring today for you guys. Cause we love you. Roll tight.